Are you ready for the best summer pattern, the reversible swimsuit by <laughs> Lolin Kids? Hey, this is Kim and I can't wait to make this with you. Okay, let's get started. So we're gonna do the bottoms first. There's literally one piece that you cut out twice in each pattern that you're gonna be making. So cut those out and then first thing you're gonna do is fold the back half, um, just fold it in half and then cut a little notch in the center so that you can remember which one is the back side and which one's gonna be the front. Because this is the entire swimsuit, isn't that amazing? So then we're gonna put them right sides together and we're just gonna sew the leg holes. Um, pretty simple, I'm gonna be using my serger anytime I say I'm sewing something. Now if you are interested in adding elastic, this little section that I'm pointing out right now is part of the back side. That is where you would put your elastic and you would just kind of estimate how much elastic you need for yourself. Just do it a teensy tiny bit less than what it shows. Um, so there it is, all surge, and you're now gonna turn it right sides out. So you see the pretty sides, so nice. And now what we're going to do is match up like patterns. Um, so match up, as you can see, I'm doing my stripes with my stripes and leopard with the leopard. Do whatever yours is. And we're gonna be lining up the side seams and sticking pins in those or clips, whatever you're using. Um, and it's gonna end up kind of looking like a box or whatever, but there's two straight lines on either side that we're, we're doing. Make sure that your seams match up nicely and that the ends, you know, for the front and back that they're matching up as well. And now we're gonna go ahead and sew across each of those lines. So take that to your serger, or once again, if you're using a different stretch stitch, you can always do a zigzag stitch or something like that. Okay, so once that's done, I am going to apply elastic to the waistband, um, just so that hopefully it prevents it from doing any rolling or something like that. So I'm just measuring how big this waistband is. It's about 16 inches, and I cut my elastic to be just a little bit shorter. I think they said to do it um, times the amount by 0.9. I did mine slightly bigger than that, so I did, I did about 15 inches. Um, and then you're just going to Put them together, do a little zigzag stitch to make it into a round, and then you're going to apply it to the waistband, just stretching slightly. And um, my biggest tip when using elastic is to make sure that you have a hand holding onto the elastic in the back so you can stretch the elastic in the front part, but not have it like, um, so that you can still keep the fabric moving. Because when you're pulling it in the front, sometimes it wants to like, pull forward and you know miss the fabric so anyways pull um, or hold on to it in the back so that you can help guide it along and um, yeah once again we're not stretching a whole lot I did stick a pin in either end just to make sure I was evenly distributing it but it's just a light stretching um, to make sure that it fits nicely to your swimsuit it's I'm using elastic in this case mostly to kind of stabilize the top of my swimsuit, but it's not necessary for this pattern. Um, it was just something that I chose to do. And it is worth noting that I am using what I like to call a wavy stitch. <laughs> you could also use a zigzag, but it does need to be some type of stretch stitch because we're sewing over elastic. You could probably do it on the serger, but I didn't want it to be that thick of a stitch. I have more control on my sewing machine as well. Okay, so one end of the waist has elastic, the other does not. Next up, this is probably the trickiest part of this pattern and it's not that bad. Find those notches that you made earlier. Match them up. So now we're putting opposite patterns together um, because we're trying to put the, both the back sides together and as well as the front side. So first get those notches, stick a pin kind of on either side because you're, you're gonna wanna leave like Mm, anywhere between like two to three inches open back there and then you're just gonna kind of scoot the fabric along and match it up so go to the seams and stick a pin there and it's gonna feel weird because it's kind of wrapped around within it like it feels like it's in this tube type form um, so you kind of have to like shuffle the fabric as you go just watch carefully how I'm shuffling it but I'm just pulling the two different fabrics together so that they continue to match up. And it's not gonna look or feel like you're doing anything correctly, <laughs> but I promise when you're all done, it's gonna work. So see how mine goes through. Like see see this whole video through and then you'll see how this is gonna work, okay? So I just pulled it all the way out and around. Like I, I pulled this, this is all in a, in a circle. 
so it's in a round so I pulled it all the way around to the next side this is the front part that I just pinned and as you can see I can keep pulling it and pulling it around so what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew leave this gap open do not sew there but you're gonna sew from this part all the way around and through to there and you're gonna have to take it slow because you're gonna have to shuffle the fabric as you go but when you're done your little tubey looking thing is gonna be like this <laughs> And then using that itty bitty one and a half inch gap, you're gonna pull all of the fabric out so that it's right sides out. Um, be gentle when you do this, that you don't rip the seam open or anything, but yeah, just go ahead and pull your fabric out and you'll see the magic of how this comes together. And voila! Do you see how beautiful this is? <laughs> okay, so the last step is to take that little one and a half inch seam and hand stitch it together. So I'll give a close up on how I do this. Also, if you do have a tag, this is where you can insert it if you would like to. So when I hand sew, or at least in this case, while I'm hand sewing, I like to use um, like a double thread, not just a single one, um, just for extra strength. And I start by going through the center and up so that my knot that's at the end of my um, needle is hidden on the inside and then it's not showing. So first I'm going under and up, <laughs> under the fabric and up through the top part, okay? And then I'm just gonna kind of fold the fabric down on either end so that's matching the rest of the seam and just kind of pinch it together as I start to hand sew. Um, I'm going to do my best to explain how to do this, but I hope that the visual is the most helpful. So I start by going across and you can go down a little bit inside the fabric and then come out the other side and pull through. Um, the key to making it invisible is to not, is to do any of the travel stitches under the fabric. So wherever my thread comes out, I go back in very close. I, I'm always going across, right? I'm going across to the other side, but I'm trying to put it back in very close to where I ended my last stitch so that there isn't very much thread showing. And then I go down through that side under the fabric and across to the other side. But once again, not doing the travel part, so to speak, like not I don't know how to explain that better, but not traveling outside, only on the inside. That's that's how you try to keep your stitches hidden. And just continue that all the way. Make sure you don't get any have any loops sticking out. Um, and when you're done, you'll go ahead and knot it. Make a knot. Um, I'll explain that part when I get to it. You really could do a quick little stitch on your sewing machine to close this up if you wanted to. Those stitches would just show. So the benefit of hand stitching is that it doesn't show. So here I'm making the loop. So I make a loop, I go around it and then go through. And that's how you make your little knot to close it off. And then I was just gently pulling it all through to make sure that the knot, um, yeah, just that it closes off nicely. And I think I do two knots. And then once that's done, I like to finish by pushing the needle down into the swimsuit and pull it out so that I leave a tail on the inside. Um, that way you can clip it and it can be a little bit of longer tail. By leaving a longer tail, you have less of a chance that like the knot will come undone or whatever. So, and then it's hidden on the inside. And there you go. That is a reversible bottom. Literally the easiest swimsuit I have ever made. Like that was such a piece of cake. And I'm not saying that it's the easiest pattern ever because swim fabric is still difficult to use. So don't feel bad if it's hard for you. But I'm just saying as far as swimsuits go, that was very simple. Now it's time for the top. Okay, this one's not bad either. So we're gonna start with one of the prints that you have. You can pick which one. Um, we're putting the top face up and then we're gonna take the back pieces and put them right sides together. So face down. Um, matching up the shoulder seams and it's gonna be you'll you'll see that the way that I'm laying it down it kind of looks funny like it's not lining up right but 
I promise it's meant to look this way and it'll turn out good in the end. <laughs> so have them kind of crisscross over each other like this and you will just sew that little shoulder seam. When you finish it, it'll flip over and it'll, it'll land or it'll fall, you know, correctly. It'll work. So do, you're gonna do this for both prints, just sew that shoulder seam right there. And now take your other print and do the exact same thing. You're just gonna line up the back pieces, right sides together at the shoulder seam and just sew the shoulder seam only. Okay, so once that's done, it's gonna look like this. And what we're going to do is um, we're gonna put right sides together, the front side lining up with the front, the back side lining up with the back. So lay it like this, as you can see. And we are going to sew this, this armhole section. So make sure that the ends are lined up nicely. We're doing right sides together with opposite patterns, if you didn't notice that. And then also make sure that the seams are laying flat. One thing that I always do when I'm matching up seams is I like one seam to like lay to the right and one to lay to the left so that they aren't really bulky. Go ahead and sew that on the serger or a zigzag stitch. And there it is, nice and sewn. Okay, so just to show you, if you are gonna do the top strap, right here is where you're gonna insert those. Sew them in, make sure that they don't get um, pulled into anything else, but that's where you're going to insert them. I'm not doing that part, so I'm just gonna skip that step and move on. So for this next step, I'm just making sure that my fabrics are nicely on top of each other because we're gonna be sewing them together. Go ahead and grab a seam gauge, if you have one. You're gonna measure three inches in and then stick a pin or a clip in that and do the same thing on the opposite side. So this is that bottom corner of the part that it's gonna be the ties. So three inches in, stick a pin in that. And then what the next step is, is to sew all the way around from one pin to the next. So you want to leave those three inches out. We're gonna sew that part later. And I just wanted to show you an example of doing this strap because for me on my serger, it is too much to take all at once. So what I do is I sew down one side and I take the curve as much as I can. And then I just sew off and I bring it back around and I start where I left off, but I've already kind of met half that curve, right? So I only have to do the other half. It's so much easier to do half a curve than to do a full, like 180 is that what it, I don't know whatever a full curve is too much so anyways I just take it halfway get back on and finish it off and that's how I do the straps the curve of the strap the curved edge of the strap okay so the top is looking a whole lot more like a swimsuit now um, we are nearly there so pull it right side out make sure it looks all cute and good and now what you're going to do is actually take that bottom part, you're gonna fold it up and kind of cover up the straps, put the back piece so that it's right sides together with the bottom part and tuck those straps in because we're gonna be doing that bottom hem or that bottom seam. Um, you're gonna to have to tuck everything in, tuck the ties in as well because we're gonna be sewing right across the bottom with it right sides together. So match up your seams nicely, tuck everything inside so that it doesn't catch because you would not want any of that to get, you know, cut or sewn by the serger. And um, stick your pins in there. And what you're going to do is sew all the way across, but you're actually gonna leave about three inches, that little section right there, you're gonna leave that out. Or maybe it's only one inch, I can't remember how much, but however much you think you can handle, <laughs> leave it unstitched. And that's what you're going to use to pull the swimsuit out. So you can pull it through so it's right sides out, just like we did with the bottoms. Okay, so now you're nearly done. Once again, just like the bottoms, we are going to hand sew it. So I'm just getting my needle and thread and I'm gonna get right to work. I zoomed it in again. I'll do the first part kind of slowly so hopefully you can watch and see my process. And then I'll speed it up since I already kind of showed you what I do. But um, just as a little reminder, I, um, I always go to the opposite side, pull across a little bit and then come out. And wherever you go in, make it really close to where the last thread came out. Um, do all the traveling under the fabric. Just 
like that. And you are done. <laughs> Look at this beautiful swimsuit. So go ahead and tie your straps, mm, but not like that. Do it a little bit more. <laughs> okay, tie the straps together and look at this masterpiece. So, so stinking cute. Um, the best part about this swimsuit, most reversible swimsuits, like it means two swimsuits, right? But because this is a reversible two piece, it actually means you have four different swimsuits that you're making. So all stripes, stripes with a leopard top, or you could do all leopard, or you could do leopard bottoms with a striped top. Like the possibilities are endless. Okay, so there's only four options, but still, that is remarkable. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. Um, be sure to follow me on social media. Instagram is come create with Kim. Let me know if you have any questions below, but otherwise, I hope you have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bye.